can you claim for the time that you work on your property business? Hi, I'm Kimberly Shapcock, qualified chartered accountant, property investor and entrepreneur. Let's sit down and have a chat. Can you be claiming for the time you've worked in your property business? Well, this is an interesting question and it's one I get asked quite regularly. And the answer kind of is a yes and a no at the same time. And the reason it's a yes and a no is because it depends on what you're doing and how you're doing it. So let's start with if you own your properties in your own name and you're doing different things on your property business. You have no companies, and it's just hopefully a relatively simple structure that you've got some properties you own in your own name, no other complications. And the simple answer for this is no. Any time you spend on your property business is just your time. And no, there is not any expense that you can be claiming through for your property business. The main reason if you do claim something, you'll then have to report it as self-employed income on your tax return. So it doesn't really serve any purpose because you'll be putting it in one area and then putting it in a different area and basically netting out that you end up paying the same amount of tax. So not necessarily worth the extra work that would be involved in it. If you have properties in your own name and you have a company that may be a property service company or a property company of some sort, there is the option that you can actually be invoicing yourself which is where the potentially yes comes in, because in essence, you have your properties in your own name, you have your company, and your company is invoicing you for work completed. Now, this is just a kind of a circular way of doing things. Is it going to add value? Maybe. It could work for you and your businesses, especially if you've got different things going on. If you've got more than one company and you've got maybe one company that's providing services, whether it's viewing services, whether it's staging, whether it's just maintenance and <laughs> going around and uh, jet washing the back garden, for example, there may be benefits for you to invoice your own company to kind of cover the maintenance costs of doing that property work or invoicing yourself as an individual. Obviously, in that company, that is going to be seen as income. So that means that you are going to be reporting in that company as income that you've received against any other expenses of operating that company. Now, this may work really well if you're looking at trying to get a salary from somewhere and you're potentially invoicing your other companies, plus maybe some third parties to do some different work. And then you claim your salary through that. Check out the video on setting up a payroll and in having that salary, it kind of nets out to zero. So you're getting some money back through that company as you've invoiced all your properties for the maintenance and the work you've done, plus maybe some third parties or other people if you're working for anybody else. There are pros and cons to doing this sort of method because obviously you've got an additional company to be operating, which if you're happy with operating another company, then that's not too much of a problem. Set up the company bank account and run things as you are your other property businesses. Moving forward, we do have the consideration to make of associated companies. And associated companies mean that those companies are connected, they are associated, and how this impacts you is that the 50,000 tax limit, which is what you can earn up to 19%, is divided by the number of companies that are associated. So if, for example, you have two or three companies, let's go with four because I can do the math quickly on that one. You've got four companies, one of which is your property services and maybe three are other investments, joint ventures, for example. The question would be, are they associated? If one or two of them aren't because they're JVs, there's other parties, they can be shown to not be associated. But you do have two companies that are, that 50,000 limit is suddenly split by two. And it's a flat two, it's not well, I can put 10 to one and I can put 40 to the other. It's flat spit. It's 25 to each company. So if in your maintenance property management company, you're not really generating anything, but it is trading, you're going to have that 25,000 at 19% allocated to that company. And then maybe your property company, which is generating, let's go with hopefully 30, 40,000, 
you're now going to be in the 26.5% bracket of tax and you're going to be paying more tax by having that extra company. So going forward, there is a few other considerations you may need to be making in having those property maintenance, property management sort of companies to see whether it is worthwhile or not to be having that sort of thing. If you're doing project management and other things on your bigger projects, then you may be able to be putting your project management fees through, which may balance out some of the expenses between the companies as project management tends to be something like maybe 5-10% of the overall project that you're doing, which obviously is a slightly larger amount to just going out and maybe jet washing the back garden at one of the properties. But it's definitely a conversation I would suggest you have with your accountant to have a look at what might be the right solution for you, whether something like this works or whether something like this just doesn't really work for you and you want to keep it a bit simpler. Hopefully today you've discovered when you can and when you cannot claim the time that you work on your business and how that might look. If you have any questions or comments then please do share with us. Please like the video and do subscribe to the channel and let's make tax less taxing.